Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is admittedly a longer one than normal and there are a lot of details in this cake. But this was for an actual wedding that we did at the bakery and I wanted to show you all the details but things are sped up quite a bit. So I was not able to get as detailed as I'd like to but hopefully you get the gist of it. First we're going to make our flowers and these are the tools that I need to make my flowers. Lots of pliers and floral wire and some floral tape, cutters, molds, a uh, small rolling pin, and a blow torch or a creme brulee torch. And what I'm doing here is I am making some buds. So I am just rolling these into cone shapes. This is gum paste, just straight gum paste. So I'm rolling them into a cone and then I'm marking in little lines all the way around. You can do however many you want, but I find that three to five typically is about the best number. Depends on the size of them also. And then I'm rolling out some, some more uh, gum paste for the leaves. And I showed you there that one side is thinner than the other. And that's so that I can insert the wire. I cut them and then I push them into my, um, my leaf veining silicone mold. And after I have inserted the wire, and I insert the wire by heating with my um, creme brulee torch, and then sticking it directly into the fatter end, the bottom end. And that is a quick way to get your um, leaves or your buds, any of your, your sugar flowers, on the wires quicker instead of having to wait overnight. Helpful little tint, hint there. And now I'm just making some 3D flowers little ones to put, it's kind of the, um, what you call it? Um, bas relief is what that's called. Just varying textures, you know how I like my textures. If you've followed me for a while, you know I like my textures. And I'm using some foam flower buds instead of making them out of fondant or gum paste because you can use them right away. And I know these are called edible flowers, but let's be honest, nobody's eating them. So <laughs> typically there's some wire at least, and a lot of times foam at the center of these flowers. So I'm just cutting out all of my petals. I did the five petal one that you saw me do at the beginning. And then I like to make the following layers um, single single um, petals, make them individually and then fold them or mold them to the spoons and let them sit for a little while to firm up a little bit. For this video, I did collaborate with Casubaris airbrush kit. Um, they sent me this in the mail to try and give my review on it. And guys, this is awesome. It's cordless. It's a cordless airbrush with all these attachments, all these different sizes that you can fill up and they have lids on the ends. It's fantastic. I've used it in quite a few videos already. Um, I have two more coming up where I used it. You just charge it and, um, and it's good to go. You just turn it on, no cords, no nothing. And I just made um, my airbrush gold by combining um, gold luster dust with a lot of Everclear. It's very thin. If you do not make it thin enough, it will clog up your airbrush. And we need to take care of our airbrushes because let's be honest, they're not cheap, typically. Um, I will have a link down below in the video description on where you can get one yourself. I do, I think they have a 5% discount right now too. So I would, if you're in the market for an airbrush, definitely recommend this. And that's not just me being a salesperson. If I didn't believe in it, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't tell you about it. And I love it. So we just airbrush all of our petals and set those, those are our actual, our leaves, and set those to the side to dry. And now that our petals have firmed up a little bit, um, they're going to hold their shape. We just brush on a little water and then attach those to the bud that we already have our first layer of petals on. Now you can make a glue out of gum paste and water if you want, but I find just water works just fine. I don't even mess with that. And then you layer these on top of each other. Kind of go around in a circle. I wish I could slow this down, guys, so you could see a little better. Um, but it, I could do a whole tutorial on sugar roses. In fact, I think I did one a long time ago. Um, just kind of layer them on top of each other is the best way that I can say it. So that they're kind of, one is tucked inside the other. And now I'm making, I don't always do this, but for this flower, since it's a single flower standing up in the middle, um, I wanted to make the callus. Calyx? 
How do you say that? Calyx? The green thing on the bottom. <laughs> and it is a smaller uh, cutter than the size of the rose. You would want a bigger one, but I don't have a, a bigger one. Calyx, is that what it's called? Sorry, sidetrack. So I kind of stretched it out a little bit with my ball tool to get them elongated on my foam that I like to use to soften my edges. And just attached that with water also. And then I wrapped some, some uh, floral wire in a green color all the way down that wire to thicken it up a little bit because it's a single stem. So I wanted it to look like it had a stem. So I just layered up that, just wrapped it around to thicken it up and then um, wrapped my leaves around it and then painted the whole thing gold, the whole bottom part gold. And I made some other sugar flowers. They were all done the same way and um, dusted some gold in the middle. And this is a foam separator is basically what it is, but we wanted kind of a little peekaboo effect in the middle tier. And the shape of this, it's kind of a horseshoe almost. Um, the shape of this is fantastic for this. Um, and I am just lining it with fondant. Now they know that this is not edible because how would you do that with cake, really? <laughs> it's kind of a visual effect thing. And then I had glued a cake board to the top. Hindsight, I wish I had layered up a couple cake boards because it wanted to kind of bow down in the middle once I put the top tier on, but it was fine. It really was fine. Um, so yeah, just if you do something like this, I would do at least two layers of cake board first. Glue them together with a hot glue gun and then attach them to the foam. And when I did the middle part, I cut it, I don't know if you can see it right there, I kind of cut it short before it got to the outside edge so that when I do the fondant on the outside on a separate piece, kind of tuck it in and you don't even see that instead of trying to do this in one solid piece. And I'm just using shortening to get this to stick. You could use water if you feel a little better with water. You can even use piping gel, but I like to be able to manipulate it a little bit to be able to move it around if I need to, especially on a shape like this. And I'm just kind of softening the edges of the two pieces where they merge together. And like I said, you're not gonna see it. And then I'm just cutting the excess off the bottom. Make sure when you cut your piece for anything like this that um, you have it long enough and wide enough that you can cut the extra off. Instead of trying to get it to stretch, you're gonna thin out your fondant and it's just not gonna look as nice. Now we're gonna quickly cover our top tier in buttercream. Actually, I think I get to this, the bottom tier also, but I kind of, this is one of those where I kind of sped through it because you see me do this 150 times, but I want you to see all the steps at the same time. So I'm using my crusting American buttercream on both tiers. The bottom tier is going to have a wrap of fondant around it, but the top tier is just going to have some gold um, embellishments on it. So we can do that on top of the buttercream with some fondant pieces. Now I put the top tier in the refrigerator while I worked on the bottom tier. Now the bottom tier, I wasn't as worried about getting it perfect. Um, you do want your sides to be level and your top to be level, but if your corner's not perfect, it's going to be okay because you're wrapping it with fondant anyways. Just make sure that the sides and the top are level and that you have enough buttercream so that they get enough buttercream in their bites. Now I'm draping the fondant on the top first because since we're going to have a quilted pattern on the side of the cake, I wanted to do it in separate pieces. I find that that's easier, way easier than trying to impress your quilting pattern on the fondant when it's on the cake. It might be an extra few steps to get it on there, but I think you get a much better finish if you do it this way. It's just so much easier to control where that pattern, where you're laying down your pattern. And it's always easier to work on a flat surface than a, um, a, a vertical surface. I'm just cutting it down to size. And set it aside. You don't see this, but I set it aside for a little bit to firm up. Just a bit. And then I took, it's just a support dowel. 
and I wrapped it around it. I rolled it up over that. I put a little cornstarch on the fondant so that it wouldn't stick to itself. And then um, overlap the two pieces, cut straight down between both of them, or through both of them, and then remove the excess and merge them together. Then I had put it in the refrigerator before I removed that bottom part. So it's easier to cut it off when it's firm for about 20 minutes. Then I flipped it back over and I'm just blending the two pieces together. Making sure that we have a sharp corner. See that quilting works way better when you do it that way. And yes, I know it's got cornstarch on it, but don't worry about it. We're gonna take care of that when the whole cake is put together. So now I realize that I did not have the right support for the rest of the cake here. I got a little overzealous when it came to that top piece. So what I did was I took a cake board that's the same diameter as the, um, the separator, the foam separator, and I marked it on the fondant and I went in and since this was firmed up, I scraped out some of the buttercream so that that board will sit flush with the top of the cake. I know this might be a little confusing, but then I removed the rest of that fondant and I put the board on there and then I put another piece of fondant on the top of that. So that there's a support, there's support um, dowels underneath that board also. So you'll never know that it's there. And now we wanted to do our lighting effect. So I have these little lights that I just placed inside around the corner and then I pushed them down a little bit to mark where they go. Same with the flower, marked where it's gonna go. Take that separator back off, it's not connected yet. Drill little holes for your details. And then I place that back on top and I use some piping gel on the bottom of the foam separator to get it to stick to the fondant. Now, I, I thought my camera was on again. Guys, it wasn't. Um, for the leaves, I just wrapped them together and made a swag out of them with the buds and floral tape and painted that again, just like on the rose in the middle. And I'm using my little, little clips made out of floral wire that I bend in half to anchor them to the cake. And a little bit of buttercream behind the flowers just to make sure that they stay in place. Same thing with the uh, other, the 3D little flowers. I just attached them with a little bit of buttercream. You could attach those with just some water because fondant sticks to fondant with water. But yeah, you know, I had the bag right there, so I went ahead. And then I'm just touching up the gold sections. And I put a little buttercream on the top and put our top tier on there. Now, this is another thing. I do have the footage of these gold, these pieces that I'm gonna paint gold, but you know, you do want to watch a 30 minute video? Probably not. <laughs> it's the same thing. You just dust your molds, you put your fondant in it, you scrape off the excess and you release them from the molds. And I did that with a little heart in the middle and the little scrolly pieces on the sides. And then I'm just using the same gold paint, luster dust and the Everclear to paint on the fondant. And here, I am using my steamer. This is where I'm getting rid of the cornstarch. Just using my uh, clothing steamer and just letting the steam evaporate that cornstarch. And it adds a little shine. The shine does dull out over time, but um, it cleans it up real nice. Instead of using a brush and water or a brush and some, some shortening, just use this. This is it. They're cheap, they're convenient, I'll never go back. And if it hits the roses and the flowers, that's fine too, as long as they don't get oversaturated. That's gonna remove any cornstarch that might have settled on them also. And there we have it guys, our finished product. I wanted to show you all the different angles and I think it turned out really cool. I'm. Turns out the couple really loved their cake and I hope you loved it too. I hope you learned some things. And like I said, sorry it's so sped up. Had a lot to show you, but we'll catch you on the next one. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to 
Check out my other social media. I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.